Hello again, my friends, and welcome back to Quick Drive or Ride Review, where we review, test drive, or test ride unique, rare, one-off, custom vehicles. In this case, I figured I would talk about living with my 2008 Lexus GX470 Overlander build. This is my daily driver when I'm not riding my motorcycles. I ride this 200,000 mile, nearly 20 year old, 15 year old Lexus that started its life as a very ugly, bulbous family vehicle. I bought this car right around COVID time. I was living in Los Angeles. I was feeling very cooped up like many of us. So I wanted something I could go out and explore the national parks and canyons that Southern California had to offer and I saw some photos online of what folks had done with the GX platform and how capable it was off-road. Ultimately, they call this overseas the Land Cruiser Prado, and it's not the full-size Land Cruiser like we all know, but it's a baby Land Cruiser. More or less, its family member is the Forerunner. Still, consider it a V8-powered luxury Forerunner. A little more leather, a little more wood. And all the Toyota reliability. I got it when it was about 150,000 miles. It was raised two inches and had some off-road tires from the dealer that I purchased it from in San Diego. And I've put nearly 60,000 loving miles on this thing. And I have a lot of experience to share with you guys because I'm doing this video ultimately because folks ask me what it's like to live with an older GX470 and how amazing it is. It's a 4.7 liter V8. 263 horsepower, but it does have plenty of get up and go. I think around 320 torque, and I never have any trouble on the highway or passing folks, especially with these custom uh, 33 inch tires and 17 inch fuel wheels. It's very capable off-road, but I did some upgrades to make it even more capable. So we have this steel hand-welded uh, coastal off-road bumper. I've added some LP9 fog lights, super powerful, especially when I would go to the national parks and the sun would set and there would be no lights on for miles. And the, these lights are the only thing that would keep me from going into a ditch or not and making it home. Added an ARB skid plate, a 15,000 pound winch, um, also added a steel bumper, which I'll cover in a second. And uh, the paint, admittedly, is a little faded. It's it spent some miles on and off road, but it's held up. It's also lived most of its life in Southern California, so there's not a lot of underbody rust. In fact, there's pretty much none aside from the little surface pieces. But one thing to look out for these vehicles is that they traditionally develop a lot of rust, especially in the northern and eastern areas of the United States. Have I had any major trouble with it? No, uh, you gotta make sure to replace the rear airbag suspension, it, and which, which we did, we replaced coilovers. The airbags in the back have a tendency to fail and sag on most, if not all of these vehicles. It's not a matter of if, it's when. Also, another maintenance point is about every 100,000 miles you have to uh, replace the water pump and the timing belt. Timing chain, timing belt? I think it's timing belt, I forget. I have three cars and three motorcycles. It all blurs together. Anyway, as long as you do that every 100,000 miles, these are rock solid. I've had no major issues with it, and I swear by these trucks. They're awesome, especially if somebody's treated it well. And uh, with some tasteful upgrades, which we'll go over, you can go on or off road. I road trip in between New York and DC now, and no problem. Okay, let's talk about one of the most important upgrades you can do on this vehicle. It's lifting it. Two inches is a perfect lift upgrade for this truck. You will find that you're pushing the max abilities of the upper control arms, the factory upper control arms. You'll, you'll notice some issues when you start driving it around and turning it full lock. So what we ultimately did was we upgraded the upper control arms, with, which most folks do. Also went with a 33 inch tire. Now, some of those guys out there will put a 35 inch tire on there and they look amazing and I'm sure very capable off-road, but you'll ultimately have to re-gear the rear end 
uh, otherwise you will blow out your rear axle, 100%, it's bound to happen. So if you don't wanna have to deal with that, but you want off-road capability, two inch lift, I went with old, old Man Emu, and 33 inch tire. Also, we upgraded the springs in front to handle the extra weight of the steel bumper. If I were to do it again, I'd probably do aluminum to save weight, but it's been fine. Another upgrade you'll see here is my welded on rock sliders. I'll be honest, I did all these amazing off-road upgrades and then I went up and just went and moved to New York City and it's overkill, I know. <laughs> but if I still was off-roading and not using this as a general tow vehicle for my motorcycles and race car, those would be awesome from rock sliders are important from keeping a rock bashing in your door and, and ruining your, your car's body. Okay, next upgrade. I think it's JW Off-Road. I'm looking at it. Yeah, JW Off-Road. I had one of the first units they made. You can't, it's ridiculous to not drive an off-road vehicle and not have a full-size spare. And I didn't want to take up all the storage space in the back because I use a lot of the storage for hauling stuff. So we mounted it on the rear and we rewired it so that it has backup camera and all the, all the stuff we need. Oh yeah. Added this fun little spoiler on top. It doesn't really do anything, but looks pretty neat. Steel bumper. I wasn't really planning on doing a rear steel bumper. I was just gonna trim the factory plastic bumper and it would have been sufficient. But I dropped it off to get detailed at a LA car wash right before I was gonna leave town. And an unlicensed employee of that dealership backed it into a pylon and smashed my rear bumper. Thankfully, no severe other damage done, but from the payment, of the damage of that, we decided to go and make a steel welded bumper and I actually learned to weld with my friend Tim Harney on this bumper. It was a lot of fun. And you'll notice I have a little valve here. So pretty interesting. I have rear coilovers and I do a lot of towing as I mentioned. And I'll put a photo on screen of me hauling my motorcycles, which puts a lot of strain and sag on these off-road springs. So a way to help sag when I'm towing a 600 pound motorcycle is we installed airbags, fillable airbags that go inside the coilovers. And there's a, a valve here and it's a regular tire valve. And so I use my tire pump and every time I'm gonna tow one of my vehicles on the back here, I put the air pump in there and fill it up with uh, more pressure and the vehicle will raise up and able to take the weight of the towed vehicle better or towed object better. I also had to upgrade the tow hitch. The factory tow hitch does not have a 600 pound tongue weight to take the bending of, of my moto tote motorcycle carrier. So I got a class four hitch here aftermarket and, and it screwed right in perfectly well under my steel bumper. Another little upgrade I did. Don't mind the junk in my trunk. So I have this fun little, little desk and my dog and I road trip the whole country and I would take this desk and I would take Zoom calls using my uh, phone hotspot and right here in the back of my truck. It was a lot of fun and I still use it. It's actually pretty great when I'm assembling uh, motorcycle parts or things for like a track day. Fun little desk. Cover a few more items before we hit the road. So if you see most of these trucks either come with a black interior, which they're usually sports package vehicles or tan interior. And you'll see my tan interior is quite nice. Well, there's a reason for that. The factory ones are garbage. They all start to turn to dust and rip and tear and crumble. Lexus of this era, I don't know what their leather was made of, but it was awful. And so anyway, we got a new leather kit and T from McCoy's Upholstery, who we've seen in my other episodes. He did that for me and it looks great. Another Fun little thing here is I have a long range GM RS radio. I have a license for that. And a long range antenna right there. And the reason I have that is I would go to the national parks and there'd be no cell service. So I wanted to be able to reach my friends who will also be wheeling. And so a radio with long range does come in handy. Quick little test ride today. This, this isn't exactly a sports car. So we're just gonna give you a quick little feel what it's like to drive this thing. Keep it real nice and simple. You may be able to tell that I installed a Borla muffler. 
some folks trying to do some really fancy exhaust systems on this thing, but ultimately all it needs is a little, a all it needs is a decent little Borla muffler. And it's pretty straightforward, sounds, sounds really good. Quick things to note, I did upgrade the steering wheel. I know this looks sort of silly, but I got one of this like nice, the, the, I found it on eBay, I think, and it, and it's cool. I had it wrapped in leather to match the rest of the interior. And I like how it feels and still maintains the wood like the rest of the vehicle has. Um, very, one of the big downfalls is the very old stereo system. And there are some options, uh, some optioned GXs that have a very simple, just single DIN stereo system right here. But, um, but these fancier GPS integrated units are much harder to replace. Now there are some Apple CarPlay units that I may try and put in here, but in all honesty, they're a little jank. So I'm not messing with that. Love my heated seats and most of my, and my GPS and high tech stuff. I just use via my iPhone mounted here. Gas mileage, I'm getting around 14, 15 miles a gallon on the highway. Not great, but not awful, I suppose, with these big, heavy off-road tires and this older engine. By the way, the 4.7 liter V8 is in this car is one of the most reliable ever made. I've had zero problems with it. One time I did install a cold air intake and it threw all sorts of codes, sounded great, but I did not want to risk the reliability on my GX470, so I did not mess up with that. Okay, so. We'll get going here. Nice little quiet area. Good little engine note, especially with that Borla exhaust. Steering is, as you can see, nice and straight. It keeps very centered. It's got a nice weight to it. It feels like a luxury vehicle. Okay, we're in a little back road area, so it's pretty quiet. I wish we had more time to go off road, maybe another time. It's not does not feel slow obviously it's not a performance vehicle but when i when i floor it it wants to go i can pass anybody no problem i'll do a little u-turn here brakes feel nice and firm i have maintained them of course there's some nice new fresh pads on there but it stops great i've had to do a couple emergency stops on the highway and i haven't had to worry about it it is a great daily driver my only complaints really, older entertainment system. Okay, sure. I do have Bluetooth in here. I added a, I think it cost me a hundred bucks, installed a Bluetooth aftermarket system, which plugs into where my satellite radio would be. So it's the satellite radio port. So I set it to satellite and that's my Bluetooth, connects to any Bluetooth phone or device. But yeah, uh, the off-road tires do offer a little bit of drone at speed. And by the way, these are Falcon Wild Peaks. I misspoke before. They are not Nitto Ridge Grapplers. But if you're thinking about getting a GX, particularly just to beat around, I use it to tow stuff. I use it to haul the family, haul camera gear. It's been the most amazing daily driver. Could I have a newer, fancier car? Sure. Am I able to afford it? Sure. I can afford a slightly nicer than a 2008, 200,000 mile Lexus, of course. But this thing is plucky. I mean, just look at it from the outside. It looks pretty cool. I get a lot of thumbs up. I was pulling next to a guy in an R8 and he gave me a thumbs up, which I really appreciate. The, the folks that know these cars, they really appreciate them. And I feel like I could comfortably run it from the 203,000 miles it's at now to about 200,000 miles, I'm sorry, <laughs> to about a million miles with no problem, as long as I keep up with the water pump and uh, the timing belt. I'll take a left here. But yeah, does not feel like a 18, 17, 18 year old vehicle. It's held itself well. The stereo is not great. The speakers have a tendency to crumble with age, so they do offer replacement kits so that you can just replace the uh, crumbling rubber and the actual speaker cones not too bad it takes like 30 minutes to cut out the old piece and glue in the new ones i've tried to redesign a new stereo because i like music but it is a headache my recommendation is just leave it stock get the best quality replacements for the original mark levinson stock speakers and just leave it as is oh quick side note there is a cd changer i don't use that too often but the cassette deck oh man 
the cassette deck, I have definitely gone to some vintage stores. I do have a record player at home. And while I'm there, you can get some cassettes for pretty cheap. So there's a lot of Journey and Def Leppard and Skinner albums that have been played through this cassette deck. And it's really fun to have. <laughs> There's also electric telescopic, telescopic steering wheel, power seats. It can jump, it can crawl, it can roll over rocks. It's a great off-road vehicle. I had a lot of fun. Maybe I'll show a little bit of footage I have here from the past. It hasn't seen anything but a dirt road since I moved to New York, unfortunately. Highway, it handles itself very straight at speed. So we'll wrap up this, this review. I'll get us on a, a main thoroughfare and you can kind of see what it, what it looks like at speed. But I'm about to drive back up from Virginia to New York City today and I have no concerns that it's gonna be incredibly comfortable. I do love these captain's chairs here, by the way. That's a great design. I feel like I'm every vehicle I'm gonna have is gonna to have to have captain's chairs. All right, I'm gonna floor it. So not exactly flying, 40, 50, and 60. So zero to 60 and eventually, but feels very stable. Stays in lane, very comfortable. So again, even with these off-road tires and folks just meandering into my lane, it's very safe to drive day to day. I feel very comfortable with my family being in it. There's a baby seat in the back <laughs> or a toddler seat. So yeah, feel free to mention any comments or questions you may have down below uh, in this video. I hope this gives you a little information about how comfortable you could potentially be in buying a sub $20,000 GX470 in today's market. I'd say you could find a really clean one between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. You could find cheaper ones closer to ten, but I couldn't recommend. I couldn't rec speak about the quality or condition they're in. But yeah, you can find a good solid one in the mid-teens, and it'll serve you well. Again, I've had no major mechanical fail failures. A couple little, little wire gremlins, a couple little wear and tear items. Nothing that ever left me stranded. So I love this thing. I highly recommend one. If you're not doing a lot of highway stuff because of the gas mileage, they're just fantastic. The power is sufficient. The braking and steering feels great. It's nice, nice luxury yet sporty feel. And it's good looking. Stock, I hate how they look. But the way I've configured my vehicle looks pretty damn awesome. So anyway, hope you enjoy our little different format of quick drive and review and I will catch you on the next one. All right, one last go. A lot of drama for not much speed.